Hi, I'm Mickey McGuire from MickeyMcGuirePhoto.com and Mickey McGuire Photo on YouTube. And I've done previous installments where I talk about photography and landscape being my passion. And I've shown you a bunch of equipment that I use for landscape photography. At one time I did do a lot of nature photography, uh, wildlife photography with the Pentax KP. Like I said in the other video, I am prim primarily a Pentax shooter and I used Nikon back years ago for some travel stuff. Well, in recent times I've acquired a Nikon camera again as a backup for my Pentax cameras just in case anything happens. But I also wanted to do that so I could grab a Sigma lens and use for wildlife because they used to have Sigma lenses made with the Pentax mount but they have discontinued those and for some years they haven't been available. So I finally bit the bullet <clears throat> and went with the Nikon camera as a backup. Now because it's just a backup and I shoot primarily landscape, I didn't want to put as much money in it as some guys would, let's say, and I looked at the comparison with the D500, the D7500, and also the D5600. And the reason is the 5600 is actually a camera that you can do a lot of settings that you want to do and, and tinker with those if you're not just going to shoot, you know, the plain old out-of-the-box automatic mode and I'm just not that kind of guy. I'm going to want to manipulate things and use the camera to its full extent and get the capabilities out of it that I really really need. So <clears throat> this is the Nikon D5600. This is now my backup camera. The KP my wife has been using lately so I don't have that option anymore and I'm very very happy about the fact that I was able to get this lens on there. This is the Sigma 150-600 contemporary lens. So I'm going to explain some things about that but real fast I'm just going to point out a couple other things that I have in the camera bag. This is kit lens. It's the 18-55 to vibration reduction lens from Nikon. It's there if I wanted to do a few little quick and dirty shots let's say for uh, landscape if I'm out there and I see something but I don't have the landscape camera with me for whatever reason. So that'll work. The other thing that I have in here, and this is a really nice lens actually, this is a 50 millimeter 1.8 Nikon lens. There is no image stabilization of any kind in it, no vibration reduction, whatever you want to say, but at 1.8 aperture it is really fast, it is very clear. I've had great results just testing this lens. Okay, so this is a really nice little lens and if I see a landscape that I want to take and I need the lighting and let's say it's low light, the 1.8 is going to be very, very handy and I can do what I need to do. But this is not a landscape bag for me. So if I'm going to shoot wildlife, I'll take this bag. I'll take my Tarion with the Pentax K1 Mark II when I'm going to shoot landscape. This is another lens that I have in here. This is the vibration reduction 55 to 300 millimeter. It's the AFS Nikkor series. This, this is a really good lens, but it's soft beyond 250 millimeter. At that point, it, it's real soft. So you're going to lose a lot of clarity with that above 250 millimeter. Below that, I've got some great shots of squirrels I've done with this thing. Phenomenal lens up to 250 millimeter. Beyond that, like I said, it's really, really soft. Kind of a disappointment there, but with all the 300s, that seems to be an inherent issue. When you get up closer to 300 and right to 300, they're all pretty soft. Now the Sigma that I am holding here, the 150 to 600, what I want to do is go over some things real fast on this. First off, it has switches on the side of it. This switch here that's out by the zoom ring, that is a lock. Now, when I put this in the case, it's fully back at the bottom, it's 150 millimeter. I lock it in the clip in position, so in the case it's locked. Bring it outside, I'll push it back, and what I normally am doing with this is I'm shooting at 500 millimeter, not 600, because it is a little soft at 600 most of the time any shake at all and because on a crop sensor body it's the equivalent of 900 millimeter it's just really hard to keep this lens super stable unless you use a two second timer or something like that on the camera but what I do is 
I look at the distance it's delineated on the focus ring and it says 500 so I line it up with the hash line and then I lock it into the position right here. That way it's set to 500. Fantastic results at 500 and I'm going to show you some images at the end of this little video that you can see what this can do at 500. Now, <clears throat> the switches that are right here near the focus ring, the first one is custom. It's C1 and C2. I've got it set for the fastest autofocus possible on C1. I pretty much leave it there because I want this thing to focus really, really quick. Okay, the next switch up is optical stabilization. Right now it's set to off. That's because I had it tripoded just before I got done shooting this morning. If you go to the middle setting, that is OS1. That's typical handheld shooting where you need optical stabilization. Number two is panning. So if you're on a tripod and you're panning, it's going to adjust for any little wavering there and keeping you in a horizontal line at that point. The next switch on here limits the focus so that you're not hunting the full length of the lens when you're focusing. Now you can set it to the back or set it to the forward and, and it explains that on the side here for the number of millimeters involved. And then finally you have the focus switch, autofocus, manual override, or plain manual focus. My eyes aren't what they used to be. I'm 63 years old, so basically I'm leaving it at autofocus the vast majority of the time. If I'm going to focus on, let's say, bison, and I know that they're a distance away and I'm going to be shooting at one particular animal for a little bit, what I might do is autofocus on them, switch to manual, that way I can just keep clicking the shutter, and he's at the same distance relative, you know, for like 30, 40 shots or whatever like that. I might do that. You know, if I've got a couple of, of uh, <clears throat> big bucks locking antlers, because they're going to move around with it, I'm not going to do that. But if I'm at a distance where I know the object that I'm shooting is not moving, let's say he's going to be there for a while, an elephant or something, I might go ahead and set it to manual and leave it that way. Or if I end up doing sports events with this, which I could do, like auto racing, I would set it on a turn in the track, focus on the rail, set it to manual, and when a car comes around that corner, I take the shot. Something like that. We used to do that manual focus lenses anyway years ago, and when my eyes were really, really sharp, it was no big deal. But I did that for jousting matches and a lot of other things. Same way. So, that's what you need to do if you're going to be focusing and you don't want it to go out of focus once you get it sharp and exactly where you want it. But, the lens is really great at, in terms of focus speed. It's actually pretty quick now that I've adjusted it to the fastest autofocus available and I use the dock that came with the lens to do that. Now the other thing I want to show you real fast okay, is that the lens hood is set, it's 95 millimeter. You have a lens cap that you can remove and put on there really easy even when the hood is in place. You can self-store the hood by putting it on there backwards, which is nice. When you put the hood on, there's a hash point where it says in, out. Turn it till it locks. Make sure it locks. You don't want it to fall off. You can get a replacement for it from Sigma, but you don't want to have to deal with it if you can keep from doing it. The one other thing is there is a gasket on the lens mount, on the lens itself. The body of your camera in most of these Nikon bodies these days, they're a metal mount. Okay, with, with the lens, when you put it on there, click it in tight, the O-ring keeps it dust sealed. I wouldn't trust it with water, let me put it that way. But what I want you to understand is there's a lot of people online right now that are saying that this lens is weather sealed. The sport model is weather sealed. The contemporary is not. Okay, the only seal is where it connects to the body and that is to keep dust from getting in your camera. That is all it's there for. It's dust sealed. Okay, period. If you use this lens in the rain, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to have really big problems. 
what you want to do if you're going to use this in foul weather and I would say you know what go ahead and do this if you get a rain cover for your lens you want that cover on your lens like one of the neoprene covers or something of like this you do not want to use this in the rain without protecting this lens if you do you're going to be sorry trust me on that the street price on this thing $899 I got this one from Adorama. I also deal with BH Photo, and I occasionally, if I need something right away, we'll go to Amazon. I prefer to go to BH or go to Adorama. Those guys are the big guys in New York City, and they're both trustworthy. They have a lot of great people there to help you out, so talk to them. I just want to say one more thing, and that is that when you're dealing with Nikon cameras, there are a few quirks. You're going to see there's a slight bit of play when the body and, and the lens are put together on a lot of combinations of lenses and bodies with their cameras. If you're worried about it, you can tighten up the mount on the body and on the lens just to make sure that they're tight. Believe it or not, it won't affect your image quality at all. You just don't want to stand there and, and move around the lens and everything and the body playing with it if it's a little bit loose and you're worried about it you can send it to Nikon they might be able to tighten it up a little bit but from what I understand there's a little end play in there to help keep the mount from wearing too fast so I wouldn't worry too much about it there is just a tiny bit of motion in this camera with it on the, the professional models it's still there there's a little tiny bit of motion it's just the way it is. Is it something that worries me? Pentax doesn't do that, but Nikon does. And basically it's in the design. So like I said, it's, it's a little bit of play, but it does not affect your image quality at all. So that's the good news. On the camera though, I'm very happy with the camera and with the lens combination. Watch at the end of the video, you're going to see some image samples. And going forward, when I start talking about doing different things with the camera and how to get around certain issues and, and handle certain situations, you're going to see video put together with images going along the way where I'm going to just cut to the image and then come back and talk about things or do voiceovers. And I've got a professional recording studio set up that I can do voiceovers and keep everything really working well and I may do some videos that are more or less slideshows with voiceovers to handle a lot of the problems like this so keep watching there's going to be some neat stuff going on I'm going to have a few things here or there I'm planning a few surprises including some giveaways some things like that so <clears throat> keep watching come on back if you go to mickeymcguirephoto.com go ahead and sign up you get a free copy of my book frame that shot the book is older I mean, it's been around for a lot of years. I'm going to redo the book. I'm going to have it on there so you can do that and, and get involved with that. That's a download. It's PDF format. So you can sign up and get that. It's no big deal. And if you like the video here, don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And hopefully we'll see you again next time. I'm Mickey McGuire, MickeyMcGuirePhoto.com, and Mickey McGuire Photo on YouTube. Thanks for watching.